हरि ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू स्वामी ज्योतिर्मायानंद सोसाइटी अ जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग विद अस वी आर करेंटली एक्सप्लोरिंग द बुक मिस्ट्री ऑफ द सोल कथा उपनिषद कॉमेंट्रीज बाय स्वामी ज्योतिर्मायानंद जी नरेटेड बाय माई सेल्फ स्वामी निखिलानंद वी आर करेंटली ऑन चैप्टर टू सेक्शन टू mantra number 7 lord yama is continuing to enlighten his favorite disciple 5 year old nachiketa regarding the mystery the profound mystery of the soul so mantra 7 according to both its karmas from the past and its vasanas vasanas are subtle desires based upon previous austerities practice of good association and study of scriptures the individual soul is led to different embodiments some souls incarnate in movable forms as animals and some in immovable forms such as plants and trees because they also have life karmas are of three types virtuous karmas called punya karma vicious karmas called pap karma and mixed karmas called mishrit karma led by virtuous karmas the soul ascends to the heights of evolution with the increasing predominance of a virtue a soul can rise to the glory of hiranyagarbha the cosmic mind with the increasing prominence of vice the soul can descend into lower forms of existence even down to the level of a blade of grass human embodiment is the result of a mixture of virtue and vice that's why it's called mrityu loka the loka of death further the individual soul is led to different embodiments driven by the force of vasana or subtle desires that's what forces us from embodiment to embodiment because we had created these desires we want those things and the last thought at the time of departure is what becomes predominant that's the vasana that fructifies and results into our next birth if sinfulness predominates one's mind the soul is led from vice to greater vice in the same way when good vasanas operate in an individual he is led from virtue to greater virtue good vasanas are generated on the basis of spiritual discourses and various forms of good association that is why all sages and saints suggest that we attend satsang we do selfless service we do kirtan we do japa meditation introspection study of scriptures all these are purificatory methods that increase our path to blessedness though the incarnating soul continues to embody itself in different forms yet the deeper reality of the soul continues to be unaffected the soul is not involved in anything it's like a witness but the due to its presence and due to maya force elusive forces we do these actions and then we become bound by them the essential nature of every incarnating soul is the supreme self brahman thus the question what happens to the soul after death is profoundly understood by realizing the truth behind the incarnating soul which is brahman the absolute and that we can do even in this very physical embodiment we are blessed to have this human body and if we put in our effort it's certainly very much possible mantra number 8 the creator of the numerous enjoyments that every soul experiences according to its karmas and desires continues to keep awake even while the latter sleeps he is the true essence he is brahman he is called the immortal all the worlds are sustained by him nothing exists 
beyond the self. This is the self you have asked for. So Nachiketa had asked for the mystery of the soul. He rejected all the temptations of the world and all the heavenly temptations also. Such was his resolve and strength to ask this profound question which the Lord of Death, Lord Yama is now narrating to us with so much love and compassion for Nachiketa. Through him, we are also benefiting. During deep sleep, the spirit in man becomes identified with the causal body due to ignorance. Therefore, on waking one says, I did not know anything. I enjoyed sound sleep. The awareness of knowing nothing is in fact an awareness of having encountered avidya or ignorance. It is this awareness of ignorance which becomes modified into the awareness of dream while dreaming and the awareness of the waking world during one's awake state. The contents of dream and waking states of consciousness become blended in one mass of ignorance during sleep. And he who witnesses the state of ignorance during sleep is the same reality that sustains the other two states also, which are waking and dreaming, as well as the entire universe. The same self is running the entire universe. We may call it God, Supreme Consciousness, Divinity, Energy, anything you like. That reality is the Supreme Self or Atman. All objects of desires are provided by Atman because they are nothing but modifications of the Self. Just as the objects in a dream are nothing but a magic show created by the consciousness of the dreaming individual. So this waking world is also like a magic show of consciousness created by Maya, cosmic illusion, the dream of the cosmic mind. See, it's a magic show. Why? Because in your dream, you are doing magic. You are seeing forms, colors, pictures, objects, even experiencing fright and joy in your dream. Yet, it's all unreal. You're walking in the beach or the desert or the open sky and suddenly you are in a different country and you see these things, you hear the sounds, you talk, you create all that magic. Of course through the consciousness. That is the profundity of this. The self alone manifests as the sweet and bitter objects of the world. It is the self that is experienced through the senses and the mind. It is the self that is the reality behind the senses and the mind also. The entire world of multiplicity, names, forms, objects, things, everything that we see is in fact the same self, one without a second. The non-duality of the self is described through poetic illustrations in the next mantra, mantra number 9. So when it enters this universe, fire assumes the forms of the objects that it pervades. In the same way, the innermost self of all beings, though one, assumes different forms and abides in them, creating multiplicity. In fact, there is nothing but the self. Just like the ocean is nothing but water, H2O. Yet the color, the waves, the uh, high waves, the low waves, the eddies, the rivers, all of them eventually merge into the ocean. That same big ocean which is nothing but water. Much in the same way, we see different uh, multiplicity aspects of the same Atman. Mantra number 10. Air when it enters into this universe, assumes the forms of the objects that it pervades. 
In the same way, the innermost self of all beings, though one assumes different forms and abides in them. Moving on to mantra number 11, which we will cover in tomorrow's satsang. This is Swami Nikhilananda. Hari Om Tat Sat.